weak as you'll make me strong. And the more that my flesh wanted to do, the more I kept speaking his word and his word. And the more I keep speaking his word, the stronger that I start getting on the inside. The more he start pulling me, the more he start drawing me to him, the more I start hearing him. The more he would let me know I'm with you that this can't kill you. You just got to go through this. You got to pass through this. And so what am I trying to show you is that God is saying today we're going to talk about learning from adversity. I learned that through the death of my mother, God began to strengthen me in some areas that I never known. And I knew that if he hadn't did it, I knew that I wouldn't go make it. And so what I'm trying to tell you is that God began to show me he uses adversity to grow us. Write this down. Whenever that you're going through trials and tribulations and it's been sent from God, you may say, God sent adversity? Yes. Read Job 1. He told Satan, why don't you try my servant Job? So God will brag on you to the devil and say, won't you try them? Won't you throw the whatever you want to do? You can have everything but they soul. So this is why I say you got to get out of that religious mindset. Why? What's wrong with me? How come this happened to me? God must don't love me. No, no, no. God uses adversity to grow you. God uses these situations to show you who he is because you find him in the midst of adversity. What is an adversity? It's a state of misfortune. It's a state of tragedy, of trouble, pain, pain, humiliation, hardship. It's where you decide in the midst of that pain that you're going to show courage to say, but I'm going to make it through this. You got to begin to understand when you're going through affliction and adversity, you got to open up your mouth and you got to speak the word. Why do I have to speak the word? You got to understand. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a teacher. The Bible say in John 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. What is the Bible telling you that if you want to activate God, speak his word. When you speak his word, you inviting God to come into your house. You invite God to come into your situation. You invite God to come into your job, come into your marriage, come into your relationship. So when you start opening up your mouth and you speaking uh, the word of God, you inviting God in. On the flip side. When you speak negative words, I feel like I'm about to lose my mind. Man, I'm tired of this. I'm first place. I'm going to quit. I can't take no more of this. You got to understand when you're speaking negative out of your mouth, you are inviting demonic spirits in your house. You invite demonic spirits to come into your situation. You invite demonic spirits to come into your life. And the Bible says my people are perishing because they lack knowledge. Can I tell you, you can come to church all you want to. You can read your Bible all you want to and that does not make you a child of God. I can be in a garage that don't make me no car. I can go to the gym that don't make me in shape. So don't get it twisted just because you show up in the church don't make you a believer. Believers believe that when you go and do, you able to stand in the midst of opposition. You got to understand that you are appointed for this. You got to understand that when God knew you when you was in your mother's womb, that he already knew when your mom and your daddy met out of those millions of sperm, he already ordained for you to come here. And a lot of times people are walking around because they don't know their purpose. They don't know their purpose because they're trying to find it in the world. You only going to find your purpose from the one who created you. Because when things go wrong with my Mercedes, I don't take it to the Ford place. I take it back to the Mercedes dealership. I don't just let no Ford person mess around with my car. I take it back to the manufacturer. And a lot of times when we go through stuff, we're going to the bar, we're going to the club, we're going to our friend, we're smoking cigarette, we're drinking the wine, you're going back to things that could never help you. And you gotta understand when you're going through adversity, you gotta go back to the very one that created you. You gotta go back to the one that knew you. You gotta go back to the one that said, I call and ordain you. He said in Jeremiah 29 and 11, the thoughts that I think to you are thoughts of good and not of evil, to bring you an expected end. He said, I got a end for your life. He said, once you see what you're going through, you got to understand, you just got to go through that. See, a lot of times, we said, God, get me out of this. No, you should be praying, say, God, help me to grow through this. Because when you're growing through, you're supposed to be learning lessons. You're supposed to be learning what did you do is wrong? What did you not do? What it is that you're supposed to be doing? A lot of times, when we're going through adversity, we don't want to talk. Leave me alone. I want to be by myself. 
not understanding that's the trick of the enemy. The enemy want to isolate you. Can I tell you, when you're going through adversity, you're not supposed to want to be by yourself. I understand there are times where you do need to be by yourself, but when you're going through adversity, it ain't your time to be by yourself. You need to get with somebody who can pray. You need to get with somebody that know the word. The Bible says you got to surround yourself with godly counsel. A lot of times we talking to people who they can't tell us nothing. You can't tell me nothing. If you fell in your marriage, how you going to help me? You can't tell me now how to pay my bills and you struggling with your bills. You can't tell me how to handle my child. You can't even handle your child. You, I need somebody to tell me that went through experience. Because see, when you're going through adversity, you're supposed to learn something. How many times you have went through something and you still haven't learned anything? The children of Israel took a two-week journey for 40 years. You going around and around. You going through the same. How come I'm going through this same trial? How come I keep going through this? I try to treat people right and they keep doing me like this. How come every time I try to help them, they keep doing me the same thing? Because God said you ain't learned your lesson. You ain't learned what you need to learn. So you keep on walking in the same footsteps. You still walking in the same circle because you have not asked God what is wrong with you in the midst of your adversity. God said, because we have been too prideful. Because when you turn on the TV, they want to tell you you can be your own God. You may say, how is that possible? Look at, turn your Bible to Genesis 3. I'm telling you where to go as I go there because I already read it. When you go down to Genesis 3, the Bible talked about the serpent. When the serpent was talking to Eve and the serpent, you got to understand that before this happened, I told you, God is a spirit. And so in other words, if you want to connect with God, the things of God, you got to speak the word out of your mouth. You're going to hear me keep saying, speaking, 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 because that's how you activate God to come in. That's how you got saved. You heard the preacher say you got to confess with your mouth. You got to believe in your heart and that he comes from the inside of you and he saves you. You got to understand if your relationship started out with him like that, you got to know that your relationship going to continue talking to him. A lot of times we get into the church and we stop talking to God we get and start doing stuff and you don't talk to him you want to talk to the man or woman of God not understanding the man or woman of God is supposed to teach you and lead you back to him not to become your God and God said in this season I'm tearing down what people have made the man or woman of God they're superstars what they have made the man or woman of God they God he said well then you know your pastor but you don't know me you know what your pastor want but you don't know what I want see God said I'm tearing that down because I want to relationship. See, that's why you see this table set right here. God want a relationship with you. He don't want no religion. He wants you. You see this table? It's for you and him. It's a representation. It's a replica. So when you get up in the morning, you say, good morning, Holy Spirit. You start talking to him. You don't pick up your phone and get on Facebook, start talking to other people. You talk to the one that lives on the inside of you because he's showing you, I need you to connect with me. And this is why when people go through, they feel like God don't forsaken them. You ain't talked to God in six months. You ain't talked to God in three months. But now that you're going through, you expect him to show up. See, we got to repent because we've been pimping God. Not understanding God got emotion. God feel the same thing we feel. So you know if nobody ain't talked to you in three months and now they want to call you like ain't nothing happened, you say, you know what, you got a lot of nerve talking to me. You got a lot of nerve calling me, talking about you want this and I ain't heard from you. And that's what we got to be doing. That's how we've been doing God. And God said, because you're going through, because I'm trying to get you to come back to me. I'm trying to get you to come back to your first love. I'm trying to get you to get back. So this is why you got to understand that we when you speak, you're speaking words. Your words are alive. Write that down. My words are alive. In John 6 and 63, he said, my words are spirit and they are alive. So that tells you that your words carry a spirit with them. And your words are alive. That's how come somebody can pray for you and all of a sudden you feel better. What happened? You feel better because when they spoke the word, God's spirit came with the words. So when you get around somebody and tell you you stupid, you dumb, nobody never wants you, what happened? You feel some kind of way because you felt the spirit that came with the words. And that's why you got to understand your words are powerful. People don't understand that Satan is here on earth. I keep reminding people, we live in this life and we act like Satan is not here. 
faith is here. The reason God still got people preaching like me to, let, to remind you who you are because when you step out of them doors, all hell is against you. And we got to start preparing ourselves. How can you be a soldier in the army of the Lord and you have not got your orders from the chief? I work on a military installation. And it's one thing that I recognize, you got to respect rank. The private can't say no anything. You can be a sergeant, you can be a drill sergeant. They can have them little privates. They'll be in the middle of the floor and say, give me 50 right now. And I'm telling you, they got to stop in front of everybody and they got to do what that high-ranking soldier have told them to do. Female, you can't sit up there and rain it. I got my hair, I got me a, you on a uniform? You can, you about to put up an arm around the top of you finna watch your hair? No, 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 if you got on your cap, your hair got to get wet or whatever because they got rules in the army. And you got to understand their rules in the kingdom of God. This is why you read your Bible because you're learning the rules. You can't tell the police officer, I didn't know that the red light mean red. When they give you a ticket, you run the red light. I didn't know. They gonna say you got a license. If you that you show them your license, you let them know you know that red means stop. So they not got permission to write you a ticket because you got driver's license, right? So you gotta understand when we break these laws in the Bible, you gotta understand the devil got permission to bring curses to us. And you can say all you want to God loves me. He do. But also he said my people are perishing because they're breaking laws and they ain't trying to stop. We trying to cover him with, with, with God got me. God covered me with his blood. He's not going to go up against his word for you and me. That's why you read so you are know and you can stop breaking the laws. Can I tell you my life start changing when I start following the laws. People in my family, how in the world she get that? How do you do that? Because I'm learning when I was breaking the laws, my life looked like how they life look. But when I start reading this Bible for myself and I start allowing it to change my mind, see, this is why God allows to attract the affliction because he's trying to transform your mind in the way that you think. Romans 12 said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your way. Your mind. That means every day you're supposed to be changing the way that you think. That's why I said you got you to gotta speak the word of God over yourself. Because when you speak it, it's just like God speaking it because he lives on the inside of you. So I had to create that foundation. So now when you go to Genesis 3, you got to understand when God created Adam and Eve, they lived on the inside of the God spirit lived within them. And that whenever God said something, whenever God showed them something, they saw things the way that God saw it. So when, if God showed them an apple, he do the call it apple. Whatever that God saw, that, that his spirit was so in them, they didn't have to want for nothing. It wasn't no sickness. It wasn't no pain. It wasn't no nothing. But you got to understand the devil is the prince of the air and he needs a body. He needs a body in order for him to manifest himself. What do you mean? God, a, a, a demonic spirit can't manifest itself just being by itself. It needs a body. What do you mean? Just like if I wake up, you ever wake up in the morning and then you ever been mad and nobody never did that to you? It's because a spirit came in in your dreams. And you woke up and you got an attitude and nobody ain't said nothing to you. Because a spirit dropped something when you was asleep. And you did not know it. And this is why when you have bad dreams, we're supposed to counsel those dreams. Because if not, you're bringing life to what it is that the devil want to plant on the inside of you. And so and this is what the enemy does. Because see, this is why you got to know you made of three parts. Even though you look at yourself in the natural, you just see your flesh. Your soul is the real you. So when you look in the mirror, you're not looking at the real you. You're only looking at what you look like on earth. The real you is invisible. The real you is what you like, how you was raised, your upbringing. And the spiritual part of you is where God lives. That's why when you read the word of God, he brings life. Because you put God into you to wake you up. And so you got a body, it's just for earth. 
A body is just your, your, the house you live in. That's why when you see somebody dead, what's there? Just their body. What's gone? They spirit and they soul. And so this is why you got to stop looking at yourself like you're just a regular human being. You are a divine being. Divine means that God has a purpose for your life. And so you can't just uh, cater to your flesh and don't feed your spirit, man. You got to feed your spirit, man, so God can manifest in your life. And so in Genesis 3, the enemy, he watched Eve. He watched her to recognize that she was comparing herself with Adam. Because when you read Genesis 1 and 26, he said God created man in the likeness, in the image. He created them, male and female, right? So that, that means he created her. She had the same power that Adam had. Adam just was the head. But that tells me when the enemy, matter of fact, let's go there. When you look at that scripture, that tells me that she, in her mind, she was entertaining something else. Because look at verse 2. The woman said to the serpent, from the fruit of the trees of the garden we may eat, but from the tree of the, but from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat from it or touch it. The serpent said to the woman, surely you will die. <coughs> Excuse me, for God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be open. Underline that. Your eyes will be open. And you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. See, in other words, before they ate the fruit, everything was good. But the enemy, think about this. Ask yourself, how could the serpent talk to Eve? He talked to her in her mind. How many times you have had negative thoughts come to your mind? If God loves you, why you lost your job? If God loves you, why is happening to you? You got to understand the enemy is sending that thought to you to make you question who you are in God. To try to make you question who your God is. And that's what he was doing with Eve. He was trying to say, you sure that God was trying to tell you that? And so when you look at it, it says in verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good, suitable to eat, and pleasant with her eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, you got to ask yourself, why did she want to be wise when God had told them everything? They can speak something and manifest. So why would she want to be wise if she was already wise? See, that tells me that the enemy was planting seeds. When I did my study, it showed that the enemy was sending witchcraft in her mind to make her believe something that she already had. Hear me. You got to understand the enemy will send stuff in your mind to make you believe something that God ain't never said. The enemy will make you believe something in your mind to make you feel to be true because he been watching you to see are you going to go with what you been thinking. And that's what he did with Eve. See, because even in the midst of tragedy, look, look what happened. Verse 7 say, then the eyes of them both were opened. See what sin would do? Sin would open up your eyes to how to be open to be evil. Because everything they knew was how to be good. But why would they want to know how to be evil? See, and they say their eyes was evil. I mean, their eyes was open and they knew that they were naked. All this time they was naked and they didn't recognize they was naked. Not the moment they did something God told them not to do. Now they recognize that they're naked. He said, then they sold figs together and made themselves apron-like girdles. And they heard the sound of God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees of the garden. See, when you're in the midst of tragedy and you pull away from God, you don't understand. They didn't even recognize that God's spirit had came out of them. How many times we going through? We going to the payday loan. We going through all of this right here because we ain't talking to God in prayer. We ain't studying. We ain't we ain't letting God deal with us. We ain't talking to Him. Not understanding. You go into church and you wonder why you don't feel the presence. You wonder why you don't hear God talking to you no more. It could it be because God's spirit has separated from you and you don't recognize it? Because this is what happened. 
And see, when God's spirit separated from them, they became gods. They became their own god. And what does that mean? That means now that when you become your own god, you don't talk to God about what you're going to do in your life. That means I'm going to do whatever I feel. So just like how you heard me say, I'm going I'm to go and charge every credit card. Whoever give me a credit card, I give one. You know, whatever, I'm going to go ahead and buy this house. I'm going to go ahead and buy this car. I'm going to go ahead and marry this person. I'm going to go ahead and have these five, six children. I'm going to go ahead and move to California. I'm going to do all of this. See, when you your own God, you just make whatever kind of choices you want to make. You may say, I didn't know I was a God. Because you got to understand, God sent us here on earth. For him. And so when we have made choices, can I tell you when you make choices without God, God loves you, but can I tell you you're gonna to have to suffer the consequences of those choices? You got people who have done different things and they good people and they made a mistake, but guess what? They gotta suffer through that choice. And see, this is why God is trying to tell us we gotta go back to Him and you gotta learn from your adversity because guess what? Can I tell you one choice will mess up your whole life? You can make the wrong decision and destroy yourself and be mad at God when really it ain't God's fault, but it's really our fault because we're walking around doing stuff without talking to God. See, this is the kind of message where you got to really learn from your, 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 your affliction. This is where God is trying to grow you and it, he, he's waiting on you to ask him a question. Holy Spirit, why am I like this? Why is my life like this? How come I'm, how come I'm in so much debt? How come I feel like I can't breathe? How come I'm always sick? How come I'm going through what I'm going through? But in the name wait and you got to listen and say God show me show me how how am I going to come out of this he's going to show you in his word he's going to speak to you in prayer he's going to speak to you in a dream he's going to send a prophet he's going to send somebody in your life that's going to give you a word of encouragement because he's waiting on you to ask him for help and the reason we're going through these same trials because we're not asking I'm telling you through my trials I'm asking why, why, why does this happen? Now I want you to understand. Let's turn your Bibles to Jeremiah 17. So you got to understand when you separate from God, you become a God. When you stop asking God what school you need to go to, what job you need to take, you have become your own God. And hear me, you ain't got to have no castle, you ain't got to have no chariots and no horses. You become an entity where you don't ask God for nothing now. You're making decisions off your own. Can I tell you, when you make decisions on your own, you are becoming spiritually dead to God. This is why God put Adam and Eve out the garden. The moment that they did this, he put them out the garden and he put an angel where they couldn't come back in. Because they began to make their own decisions. And this is where God saying, my people will seek me. My people will come to me and I talk to them in prayer. My people, they going to hear my voice in the voice of a stranger they won't follow. That's just like, the enemy may tell you something about somebody. And you may say, well, no. The enemy may say, you know what, they know down and they this, 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 this. And you know your, your, your experience with that person, you ain't never experienced that. You got to begin to check what's in your mind that's making you think that about that person. That's why the enemy will come in and try to change the divine destiny that God got for you. Because now he wants you to look at somebody who God put in your life to help you. Now he wants you to look at them like they're enemy. Can I tell you, we can't choose our help. The help may come from a woman. Help may come from a little kid. There have been times little kids, I was seeking God for something, and it came out of a little kid voice. Said something. We can't tell God who to, who to show us or where our word is going to come from. Look at Jeremiah 17. When you look at Jeremiah 17, let's look at verse 5. He said, Thus says the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusts in man. So he's saying when you're going through adversity, when you're trying to figure it out on your own, 
He said you have already cursed yourself. So now we got to look at it. When we have not consulted, can I tell you anything that's done without prayer is illegal? You go and go get that car and you ain't talking to God. That car was getting out of the will of God. So when you have problems, God, I thought you blessed me with the car. You ain't even talking to God about the car. And see, God trying to say, everything that you do, it got to come through me. Even when you date somebody, God, is this the right person? This is the person I should be marrying? Is this the job I should take? We need to take everything to God. Is this the church I need to attend? Because if you don't take it through God in prayer, you're subject to start becoming your own God. And that's why we see what we see in our churches. People have become their own gods. They don't want nobody to tell them the truth. I don't like what you're saying. And then they will rise up and speak evil about you. You telling them the truth. It's because they don't know the will of God. He said, how can you hear unless you have a preacher? That preacher got to be sent. You got to understand, everybody that's preaching ain't sent. You got some need telling you, oh, you so good. Oh, your blessing coming. Oh, your car coming. But ain't nobody told you that you operating in unforgiveness. Ain't nobody told you you ain't spoke to your mom in 10 years. I ain't told you that's unforgiveness. Ain't nobody told you that you got a bad attitude. Ain't nobody told you how to correct you. Do you not know that love is correction? My mom used to tell me when she whooped me, Alisa, I whooped you because I love you. I discipline you because I love you. Your parents tell you to clean your room because they love you. Your parents tell you to wash them dishes because they love you. But so you may not like it right now, but when you begin to be an adult, you understand why. Because they teach you structure. They teach you order. And we got so many parents that are not teaching their children the basics. We got so many people that come to church and they don't know the basics. They don't know that you should be reading. The Bible says in Psalms 1, meditate on the word day and night. Do you not know that when we don't meditate on the word day and night, we're breaking the law? You can meditate on the word and don't pick up your Bible. You can just have a scripture in your mind. And ponder it in your mind. Meditate means to ponder. To think upon. And so a lot of times we ain't thought nothing about the scripture. Not understanding you breaking the law. Then you wonder when you're going through why I don't know what to say. Because you didn't put no word in your mind so you know what to say. You see what I'm saying? These are tools that God is saying you should be learning while you're going through adversity. He said that's why he said curse is the man that trusts in man. And make his flesh his arm, whose heart departed from the Lord. For he shall be like the heat in the desert, and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, and a salt land not be inhibited. And God said, that's why when you go through, you, you don't know what God is trying to do, because God saying, you ain't talk to me, because you trusted in yourself. Somebody shared with me, I told them to go on a fast, and they told me when they went on the fast, they said they got demoted. Mm -hmm. And I said, continue to seek God. God is about to promote you. He said, I can't understand that. I said, God said, my ways are not your ways. I said, why would God put you in a place where you decide you want to start seeking him, and when you seek him, you get a demotion? See, sometimes we don't know the will of God. The Bible said promotion comes from who? God. So I told him, God is trying to promote you, but the devil want to make you walk out on God. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? I said, you got to keep pressing, man of God. Keep on fasting. Keep on studying. I said, God has created a position just for you. How can you know that? Because I know that God don't demote. You got to know that when the enemy, when you're doing right and something bad happens, it's because God has released something from heaven down to earth. And you got to know how to get it from the invisible realm into the natural realm. Can I tell you, we mess up a lot of stuff because we speak it out of our mouth. We mess up a lot of stuff because you think it negative in your mind. You don't think God ain't looking at your thoughts. Why you think he say, my ways ain't like your ways. My thoughts ain't like your thoughts. 
He, why you think he said in Jeremiah, I'll watch it. I'm watching to see what you're doing. In Malachi 3, angels, it's their job to recall what we do. Do you not know you got a personal angel that's assigned to you? That angel, will go, he's going to say what you're doing. It's his job to report to God what you do and what you don't do. And see, we, we try to prove ourselves to people. People. People ain't got no heaven and hell to put you in. We got to know how to walk this word so God can bless you to walk in the promised land. See, people looking at COVID and they don't recognize that the enemy will release death. The enemy will release doom and gloom. Do God release doom and gloom? No. God is a God of blessing. But a lot of times we see things hopeless because we're still looking from a worldly standpoint and we have not cultivated our relationship with God. If everything in your life is based on what you see in the natural eyes, that's an indication you still spiritually dead. Because the Bible said the kingdom is where? Within you. He said the kingdom don't come with power or observation, but the kingdom comes with deliverance. The kingdom comes with change. The kingdom with, comes with, I walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to make it up out of here. I don't know where the money coming from, but I'm going to make it. I don't care what the doctor said, but I'm the healer of the Lord. I don't care what it looks like, I'm the deliverer of the Lord. You got to begin to speak what you don't see. That's why we don't see power manifesting. Because you keep saying, well, I ain't got but $100 in my, in, in my bank account. And my life being $300. See, you keep on calling over what you see. That's why you go back to a place of prayer. And you tell him what his word says. And stop telling God what you see. He know what you see, but he want to know, do you believe what he said? That's why he says, stop believing in yourself. He said, because you curse yourself when you believe in yourself. Let's look at, let, let's go down to verse 9. He said, the heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. What is the heart? Heart means your thinking, your soul. He said, your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. In other words, God is trying to tell us when you don't put that word in your mind, you're going to be deceived by a thought that comes in your mind. The word of God, it washes our minds. That's just like we walk around here taking a bath. I mean, you don't take a bath, but you put on clean clothes. Do you think it's going to smell? Mm -hmm. You're going to smell through them clean clothes. That used to happen when I was a, a, a nurse in the nursing home. Some of the CNAs, the AIDS, they would put the patient on clean clothes. And I said, mm, something ain't right. No, you got to put them in the shower because I can smell. they clean clothes. Yeah, they're clean clothes, but these people ain't just no baths. And that's the same thing God has said about us. We have not took a bath in the word to let the word deal with your thinking. And so you automatically think that you thinking the right thoughts. That's why a lot of ways we're looking at things, we're looking at things totally wrong. And God said because you're out of order, because you did not get in the word and you did not, the Bible say, I'm chasing those who I love. You did not get in this word and you did not let me show you your way of thinking. You, you thought that God don't care about me? Can I tell you right this now? Hebrews 5 and 8 say, though he was a son, talking about Jesus, Though he was son, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So that even though when God was here in the flesh, he was teaching us a pattern. That he learned how to submit to God through his suffering. Because can I tell you, suffering don't feel good. Suffering make you feel like, man, I need to get up out of here. I just don't like this. He wants you right there because he wants to show you how to depend on him. He wants you to submit your mind. Even though you want to walk away, but he wants you to stay right there. Even though you say, I don't want to pray. He wants you to stay right there and talk to him because he's going to show you how to obey. He's going to show you how to submit. He's going to show you to let him take you through this and you're going to see that you got out. You you grew in the midst of this affliction. See, we don't like it, but he put you there to humble you. See, I don't like this. He didn't tell you we're going to like it. He said, those that suffer with me shall what? Reign with me. How you going to reign with him if you can't go through suffering? 
See, that's a part that they haven't taught us in church. Some people have, they don't teach that. If you ain't going through no suffering, I'm telling you, you ain't from the rain. You ain't gonna have no power if you can't go through no suffering. Because suffering is gonna show you your real heart. Show, suffering is gonna show you do you really love it the way you love it. Or you gonna get to church and you go, man, please. I wish you shut up. I'm tired. See, he's trying to show us us. He's trying to show you the house that he living in. He said, because you're supposed to enter into his courts with thanksgiving and with praise. He didn't say just because everything good. He didn't say because everything going the way you want to. He said, enter with thanksgiving and with praise because I'm gone. Come on here. How do you want him to come on time and you ain't coming there on time doing what you're supposed to do? Yeah, I don't feel like praising, but guess what? I'm created to praise him. I don't like this, but God is good. How you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. It may not be going on in my life the way that I want it to be, but as a son, I'm supposed to speak what he said. Do we miss it sometimes? Yes. But dust the dust off your knees, get back up, and start doing what he told you to do. God ain't trying to condemn you, but he's trying to show you, you got to smash all that mess we learned. Because can I tell you, we learned a lot of stuff don't mean nothing. We know how to fake it till we make it. And I ain't talking about faking. I'm talking about I could be going through hell and you would never know I'm going through hell. You know why? Because I'm going to get in here and preach like a mad person. I'm going to get in here. I'm going to pull out. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do everything that I know to do. And that's why he blessed me. Because I do what he tell me to do. Do I mess up? Yes. Do I want to fight? Yes. Do I want to cut some time? Yes. I just go and tell on myself, I need some help because I'm ready to run. I want to knock a joker off. I, I want to cuss a joker out. Help me, Jesus. Because they want me to put some hands on them. See, yeah, yeah. See, that, that kind of relationship I got with him. Because it's me and him. He ain't going to judge me like how you will. You the apostle talking about you want to put some hands? Yep. You the apostle talking about you want to cuss somebody out? Yep. That's why I talk to him. Because, see, you can put me in a box and you can try to say, she shouldn't do that. But I'm human just like you human. I hurt like you hurt. You can hurt my feelings just like how your feelings can be hurt. That's why I have to stay on my face with him so he can strengthen me that I got that kind of relationship. I can go and tell him, yeah, I want to come. But I did. I did make it on the microphone went out. And this is what he's trying to do. He's trying to show us how to go through adversity. He said, verse 10, Jeremiah 17, 10. He said, out of the Lord, I searched the heart. I trained the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. So in other words, God said, I watch you and I'm testing you to see what's in your heart. I'm testing you to see what's in your mind. So if you're going through, I'm going to see or you're going to read it. I'm going to see, or you going to praise me. I'm going to see, or you, you ever seen some people shout it down because they got a blessing? But when they going through, how you so quiet, child? I'm going through. You don't want to worship? I just ain't in the mood. I just don't feel like it. Can I tell you it ain't about your feelings? It's about relationship. It's about that when he, you remember what he, what he did for you. You remember that you're going through and you're being tested. I told them in Bible study Thursday, when you are being tested, the teacher is quiet. Isn't that right? You taking the test, do the teacher talk? No. So when you are being tested, he quiet. Because he want to know what I had you to learn when you everything was going good. I gave you time to pray. I gave you time to fast. I gave you time to put the word in you. So now I want to see what you're going to do. This is helping y'all. Because see, we got to begin to understand that God is allowing this because he want to show you something. Let's turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. He want to show you in 2 Corinthians 4. When you look at 2 Corinthians 4, see the enemy have blinded us if you don't understand what I'm saying. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, chapter, look at verse 3. When you look at verse 3, he said, and even if the gospel is veiled, veiled means to cover. If it is veiled, 
to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servant of Jesus saying, For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, may his light shine in our hearts. So when you hear the preaching of the word, the light is being shined in your mind to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Look at verse 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that through all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. You are perplexed, but not in despair. You are persecuted, but you are not abandoned. You are struck down, but not destroyed. We are always carrying around in our bodies the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that in his life may be revealed in our mortal body. See, through your suffering, through affliction, we go through, yet it hurt, but glory is being manifested on the inside of you. And if you want glory to manifest on the inside of you, you got to begin to go through the right way. You got to go through and know that it can't kill you. You got to go through and know that everything is going to be all right. I don't know how it's going to be all right, but I know he's going to make it all right. You got to know that if you're a child of God, you got to tell yourself, you know what, when, when, a, uh, when a cat have a baby, they have some baby kids. When a dog have some babies, they have some baby puppies. I've never seen a bunch of church people. We say we children of God, but don't nobody got no power. So, what children are we really in church? Why are you talking this? Because we have got it twisted to put your blessing to make you think that's powerful. You can get in a car and it come from the devil. You can get a big old house and it can come from the devil. But it's one thing I know. When you got the love of God, that can come from the devil. Because he said, love those that persecute you. He said, if your enemy is hungry, feed them. You got to understand when you are a child of God, like them old folks, I grew up in a Baptist church. They used to sing a song, if you got the Holy Ghost, you ought to be able to show some sign. We ought to be able to show some sign that you're a child of God. You ought to be able to show some sign that you know how to cast out a devil. You ought to show some sign that you know how to get some folks saved. You ought to show some sign that you can lay hands on the sick and the sick say, I feel better. You ought to be able to show some sign. But we in church and nobody don't look for no sign. Something is wrong with that. That's a demonic church. Yeah, I said it. You telling me y'all are a thousand deep, but don't nobody be changed. Ain't nobody helping nobody. Ain't nobody loving nobody. But everybody look good. I got on my bank of car. I got on my, my chain. I got on all of this. We bragging about what we got, but your heart is stone cold. What kind of Holy Ghost is that? Because when you really got God, He gonna deal with your heart. He gonna tell you how you talk to them children ain't right. Go apologize. He gonna tell you you being mean. Stop acting the way you acted. I don't know about you, but my Holy Ghost tell me about me. My Holy Ghost tell me when I get ready to get on my knees, the first person He gonna deal with is me. So don't tell me God don't gave your word for me, and yet you evil and He ain't told you nothing about you. Don't tell me you all went to the root walker to put some roots on somebody, but then the Holy Ghost, then you come to the church and you shout the, you shout the house down, but you just over there at the root worker last year, last week. God don't do stuff like that. When you don't want to learn, you don't want to grow. You can be 80 years old. You still should be growing. We should be teachable. But when we so set in our ways, we have, we have pushed the Holy Ghost out. And see, we got to understand God ain't pleased with that. That's why he said, you going to go through. He said, you're going to be crushed down, but you better know it's working for your good. Yeah, you may feel confused in your mind, but you better know it's working for your good. See, don't count me out because I'm going through. Don't count me out because it looks like I don't look like the way you think I need to look. You can't count me out because he counted me in. We let people count us out and they ain't got no heaven and hell to put you in. I tell them, if you can't encourage me, you ain't finna discourage me. Keep your mess to yourself. I don't want to hear it. I'm going through something. Don't tell me, I told you, you should have did that. I told you you should have been listening to them church folk. I told you you should have been doing that. I ain't listening to the 
When you go into adversity, you should be around people that's going to build you up. The Bible said we that are strong are supposed to bear the infirmities of the weak. If you know you're going through, you better get around some strong people. You around these people weak in war. They can't bust a grape and you can't bust them and y'all y'all deep in the house. I ain't entertaining you and you can't help me. It's time for us to examine the house that God lives in. Are you the house of God? Because the Bible tells me that the glory lives in the house. The glory lives in him. There's a king that lives on the inside of me. There's a king that when I'm asleep, he talks to me. And he tells me that he loves me. He tells me that no matter what it looks like, that he got me in the palm of his hand. And that when I'm hurting, I can go to him. It don't matter at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. He begin to talk to me. He begin to sit with me. He begin to tell me that I'm going to make it. He begin to let me know you keep talking to me. And I'm going to work it out for you. You got to know who you got on the inside. In my clothes, turn to Matthew 26. This is the text. That if you're a child of God, write this down. You got to understand that you're going to go through some of these things. When you read the text in Matthew 26, Jesus, Jesus had a hit on his life by the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees. What does that mean? That you will have a hit on your life by religious people. Because they say it don't take all of that. I grew up in this Baptist church. I grew up in a Baptist church. They told me that a woman come preach. They told me that you don't speak in tongue. They told me that God just talked to the preacher. I grew up hearing all of that. But when I read my Bible, that ain't what my Bible said. And so when I begin to start preaching and teaching, and I begin to start speaking in tongue, some of them same religious leaders begin to tell me God don't talk to a woman. I said, but I don't know about you, but I talk to him. He talked to me. He woke me up. He called me out my sleep. He called me out my name. He gave me power to lay hands on the sick. I know I don't have no power to do that. He gave me power to cast out demons. I know I don't have power to do that. So I know he did it. But when I was in your church, I ain't cast out no devil. But when I was in your church, everybody sleeping with each other, everybody drinking, everybody pouring all in the church. Even they had the homosexuals and they're leaving us in the choir. So you gonna tell me because I'm a woman, so people will stone you when you meet the real Jesus. When you got the real kingdom on the inside of you, because it go up against what they learn in church. They gonna plot up against you. The second thing they would do, people who you who been with you, people who you help, people who you talk. That's what Judas did. Judas did not like when Mary began to get the oil and she broke the perfume and she put it on Jesus. He did not like it because he used to steal. He was the treasurer. He kept the money. And he said that we could have used that money to feed the poor when really he know he was stealing from it. But he didn't like it. And Jesus said, the poor going to be with you always. But she preparing for my burial. And the Bible says Satan entered Judas' mind. So that tells me that you're helpful. You'll give them a place to stay. You'll give them some food to eat. And the moment you tell them what you're doing ain't right, they'll become your enemy because they don't like that you told them the truth. Now they want to kill you. Now they want to slander your name. Now you want to tell everybody I ain't right because I told you the truth about you. So now you want to go with everybody who hate me. And now you want to yoke up with them talking about God don't cause you to separate from me. You're a lying wonder. You just don't want to be disciplined. I'm talking about if you're a real child of God. So if you ain't been betrayed, you might want to check your walk. So that's what Judas did. The next person was Peter. Peter loved Jesus. Peter said, Jesus, wherever you go, I'm going to go. Jesus said, before the crop uh, crow three times, you're going to deny me. You will sit up here, people tell, I'm going to always be with you. I'm going to always be a part of your family. I'm going to always be a part of your church. I'm going to always help you. I'm going to always. And the moment somebody say, you going through something, you going through affliction, you going through people walking away. And somebody say, do you know a pastor? Oh, uh -uh. I didn't see you at that land church. Oh, uh -uh. You, you don't work with her and talk to her. Oh, uh -uh. 
folk think it's about the title. Oh, you got to be suited up. Oh, you got to be looking like church. Oh, you got to be talking proper. Oh, you got to all this. All that is a bunch of mess. You got to be able to stand in the midst of affliction and still call on the name of the Lord. Smiling at these folks and you know they hate your guts. They praying for you to die. I had people that pray for me to die. They told me they were fasting for me to die. And God said, you bless them. You tell them what I said. Don't you put your flesh in it. Let me do this. You know why do God do that? Because he got to let them know they ain't got no power. He got to let them know my hand is upon you. When my hand is upon you, can't nobody stop you. We've been making them have more power than God. It's a hundred of them. They just two of me. To me and my friend, nobody else. God said, I got one angel that can take out ten, that can take out a hundred thousand people. One angel. Do you study? That's why that's Jehovah Sabbath. That's the Lord of angels. That's when he got angels that would come in and take. I'm telling you, one time I left church, me and my husband and my daughter left church. My son went there. And before I left church, the Holy Ghost said, I got you. And I did not understand. He said, I got you covered. He said, you surrounded by a wall of fire. And I kept saying, okay, God, I don't understand what that means. We left church. We went out to eat. And we was getting ready to drive home. While we was driving home, my husband fell asleep while he was driving. We were sleeping in the car. And all of a sudden, I saw somebody in my sleep. I felt the car shanked to the left. And... My husband almost hit two ladies, but the angels of the Lord yanked the car to the left and we went into the bushes and the bushes closed up where nobody could see us and we were this close from the ditch. If we would have fell in the ditch, we would have been dead on impact. But the angels of the Lord had that car where that car was this much from hitting the ditch. We all walked out the car. My daughter had some stripes on her leg. We was all right. The angels, they came in and snatched the wheel away. He sleep, we all sleep, and he driving. So you can't tell me God ain't real. I experienced that myself. And he told me, right as I got out of church, I got you. Don't worry about it, I got you. He knew what the enemy planned it, and he said, I got you. So he's letting us know. Matthew 26. Look at verse 36. People going to plot on you. They going to betray you. They going to deny you. Write this down. Prayer is my weapon. In order to make it through adversity, it must, you must pray. Prayer is your communication with the Lord. You don't just pray when things happen. You pray every day. Sometimes two or three times a day. Can I tell you, I don't care if it's 15 minute prayer, 20 minute prayer, you got to talk to him. Can I tell you, if you don't pray, God can't do it. You can be in a house and the house is on fire. If you are not praying, he can't put the fire out. And so a lot of times we are mad in tragedy and affliction, but you ain't speaking the words to give him a way to, to do what he need to do. Because in your mind, you looking, if your house is chaotic, you saying, it's chaotic. It's crazy around here. That ain't what you pray. You pray, God, I thank you that you're Jehovah Shalom. You the Prince of Peace. I thank you that you silence every voice. You silence every tongue that's not like yours. That's what you pray. You don't pray the problem. You pray the solution. He knows that the, your house is chaos. He needs you to open up your mouth and release his word. So when you release his word, he got his angels that come on. She gave me permission to come in. Let's go. And a lot of times, God can't come because you ain't said nothing. Pray is like a fire. If you just put the logs in the fire, is that fire going to keep burning? No. You got to keep putting logs in there to keep that fire burning. So every day I get up and pray. In lunchtime I pray. Before I go to bed I pray. What am I doing? I'm keeping the fire burning. So that when I cry out, he said, that's Elisa's talking. Do you not know that God's spirit is in you so that when you put his word in you, when you pray, the angels don't hear you no more. They
say hey, hey. This is why you live righteous and holy because when you start talking, the Bible say he got his angels in Daniel 10. He told the angels, he, the angel told Daniel, they said, we came because of your words, your words, your words. So your words draw angels. That's either demonic angels or either God angels. So don't talk about all these demons around you, all the demons around you because you're saying a lot of evil around you. So when you look at Matthew 26, look at verse 36. So when you look at that verse 36, this is showing you that Jesus identified with everything that we're dealing with. So when you look at Matthew 36, I mean Matthew 26, 36, it shows here. It says, then Jesus... Then come Jesus with them into a place called Gethsemane. Gethsemane was a place where olives grew. It was, a, it was an olive garden. And how do you get anointed oil, olive oil? You get it from olives. In order for you to get anointed oil, those olives got to be beat. They got to be crushed. And so, when it said he went to the place of Gethsemane, it's telling you that he went to a place that he was about to be beat in his mind. He was about to be beat with warfare. He was about to be beat. You ever, you ever experienced so much in your mind? He, he went through that. He went to the place to get beat before he got on the cross. And this is what it says here. This is why I said you got to learn from it. He said he went to the place called Gethsemane and he said unto his disciples, sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. So he was letting them know, even though I'm going through, but I got to go pray. Write this down. Even though you go through, you got to go pray. Verse 38, I mean 37. It said he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee and he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. He said, Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further, and he went on his face, and he prayed, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, as I will, but let your will. You got to understand, Jesus began to feel so much pain in his mind. He said, Father, if this thing can pass me by, let it pass me by. That's, I believe he was in his flesh, but he had to understand when he going through suffering. He said, Father, but nevertheless, not my will, but let your will be done. See, that's come a time when you going through in your mind. You got to say, Father, will be done, even though I want this, even though I want it to happen like this, but not my will, but let your will be done, because I know that you with me, I know that you ain't gonna let me, you ain't gonna let me lose my mind, you ain't gonna let me have no breakdown, you ain't gonna let, you gotta understand that God is allowing you to go through the tragedy, because as he's allowing you to get beat, as the enemy is beating you, you being crushed, and you being crushed, you gotta know that a
why we keep seeing people, we go through the same thing. But I'm waiting on my change to come. That what they say? It's just like that joke. That man said, I'm waiting on God to come in the middle of the ocean and get me. And they send the plane by. No, I don't want to ride. Because I'm waiting on God to come get me. They sent some, a man in the boat. Oh, I don't need no rain because I'm waiting on God to come. Then he started praying. God, why you ain't come to get me? God said, I came by the man in the plane. I came by the man in the boat. But you rejected them. So when you rejected people, you are rejecting me. He said, because I'm sending you help for your affliction. So you got to begin to say, God, help me to go through my suffering. You got to begin to talk to that thing while you going through it. Come on, stand up. 